I'm here with Dr. David Agus, who's a professor of engineering and medicine at at USC. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at, at at pictures here of things that seem very different to me. What 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 is the commonality right here? The commonality is inflammation. So inflammation can be manifest by a runny nose and a cold or getting the flu. Right. It could be manifest by an infection in your toes. It could be hitting your head playing football or hitting your arm when you fall uh, playing a sport. All of those can cause inflammation. And I want to, because inflammation has a certain meaning in everyday language. It kind of means, what, at least when I imagine it, means something is swollen and red. But here we're talking about inflammation in, in more of the medical or the scientific sense, where it's not, things are swollen and red because of inflammation. Right. And, and what, so what is inflammation? It isn't just swollen and redness. You're talking about, inf I mean, you know, uh, football player isn't getting swollen and red, or is, or, or is he? So inflammation is your body senses danger. So right. when something is wrong, whether it be an infection, whether it be trauma in the case of football players, whether it be a cold, your body senses danger and sends in its frontline soldiers, which are the immune cells, in order to fight whatever is causing it. So if it's trauma, the immune cells go in there and they help rebuild the tissue that's damaged. If it's bacteria, they go in there and they try to take away the bacteria so you can get over that cold or that flu. And so that whole process we call inflammation. It's a I danger see. process. So it's the immune cells going to the sign of danger to either fight the danger itself or repair the aftermath yep. of the danger. So, so that sounds like a good thing. It's an awesome thing. The yeah. problem is your body, mm -hmm. all of us, we care about what happens today, not down the road. Right. And this is you know one of the take home points that astonish me when I start to think about it, is that nature, evolution, selects out for who has good kids. And that's what evolution is about. It's about having children, we call progeny. Right. It's not about what happens when you're 80 years old or 90 years old. Right. And so inflammation is fantastic about dealing with today's ramifications. Right. The problem is, if you get the flu today, yeah. your risk of cancer and heart disease a decade or two decades from now are up. If I get the flu once? If you get the flu once. Really? So those five, you're, six you're days me. where you feel horrible, your inflammation is through the roof. Right. That's having ramifications down the road. Right. And I mean, and just to take a side, I mean, this is already getting a little scary for me because I've had the flu, so I already feel a little worried about my cancer. I can risk. tell by looking at you. <laughs> you can by look that. that uh, but, but, and, and, and the, the symptoms that we get when we have the flu or mm -hmm. cold, these are actually, it's not the virus that's, the virus is causing the inflammation, which is causing the symptoms. Yeah, and that's what's wild, is that yeah. when you get a virus, your immune system attacks it, and then you get a fever. I still don't know why we get fevers. Wow. It's one of those things where the, what we call them the cytokines, which are proteins the immune cells make to send out and get more reinforcements and tell the body what to do, it causes a fever. Is a fever good? Is a fever bad? I don't know. We take Tylenol to lower a fever, right. but is that a good thing? Nobody really has looked at the long-term ramifications. They look at short-term, but how does it affect a decade from now what's going to happen? We just don't know. Wow, wow. And what you're saying is, is that the reason why we have inflammation is, yeah, when something's happened to my body, I have some trauma, some injury, and you were saying this to me earlier, you might have to run away from a lion tomorrow. So right. fix, fix, fix Sal or fix David up right now so that he can run away from the lion tomorrow. But you know, you know, in, 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 in the wild, I might not have lived to 40 anyway. So right. so why even worry about whether that person might get cancer if they get to 40 or 50 once they're past the age of reproduction? Exactly. The body has to choose priorities. Right. And the priority clearly is today rather than tomorrow. Right. And so an amazing study was done in that we gave patients what we call a statin. So statins mm -hmm. were drugs, S-T-A-T-I-N. They were drugs that were developed because they blocked the synthesis of cholesterol. Right. And we thought, you know, people with higher cholesterol, particularly the bad one called LDL, those people have a higher incidence of heart disease. So if we block the synthesis, we're going to affect heart disease. And what right. do you know we did? Right. A dramatic effect where we lowered the death from heart disease with these drugs. Right. So it seems like they worked. They worked. Then a right. company or a very clever group did a trial where they gave people with normal cholesterol these drugs. Right. And they had a dramatic effect in that it delayed heart attack and stroke by almost a dozen years. Wow. And it reduced the incidence of cancer by about 40%. So cancer, something, I mean, we don't associate totally cholesterol. Different. So, wow. So it turns mm -hmm. out these drugs, which were the biggest drug in terms of sales we've ever had, right. worked by lowering inflammation. So wow. their effect on heart disease wasn't by lowering cholesterol. It was predominantly by lowering inflammation. Uh, right, and right. the effect on cancer was by lowering inflammation. In fact, do you remember when the swine flu came out a couple of years ago? Right, right. So if you got the swine flu, 
The only thing that protected you from your lungs collapsing and going on what we call a ventilator, a breathing right. machine, was being on one of these statins. Because it would stop the inflammation. Because swine flu yeah. people were dying from just the inflammation going nuts. Yeah. And and so the, this is fascinating. So it isn't even necessarily the people who are dying of heart disease. Is it necessarily the cholesterol that's killing them, or is it the the, the inflammation that's causing cholesterol? Well, I think it's it's this chicken and the egg phenomenon. Right, right, right. The inflammation allows cholesterol to deposit and I they see. go together. I see. So um, it's really it's really the statin affects inflammation, inflammation, which then which then reduces cancer by stopping the inflammation so and stopping the Exactly. The One of the problems we have in biology, in yeah. medicine, yeah. it's what you can measure. Right. And so I can measure cholesterol. Right. I don't really know how to measure inflammation well. Right. So while we can make these association in big studies when we look back, right. if I had a metric, if I had a blood test or something to look at for inflammation, I can optimize things. Can you not measure just uh, the amount of cytokines and other inflammatory type uh, type of things that become increased in your? Uh, is, does right, that happen? There, there are different types of inflammation, right? right? So I see. some inflammation can be good, some can be bad, some yeah. can be really causal, right. some can be a little bit causal, right. and so we're putting them all into one basket now, right. which is inflammation. Right. The key is to start to tease them out and be able to modulate them. You know, you could develop a drug, but then you have to optimize it for a particular purpose. Right, right. So these were optimized to lower cholesterol, and they do that very well. Right. They also lower inflammation, and they work beautifully in that regard. But how do we optimize that going forward? Right. What it also means is that when you look at your lifestyle and my lifestyle, we have to limit inflammation. Right. So what are the easy ways to do that? Huh. One is, which I think should be mandatory things like the flu shot. Right. So again, the flu shot will certainly... Uh, delay you from having or prevent you from yeah. having bad flu. That's good today and good tomorrow. And tomorrow yeah, 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 it limits yeah. heart disease and cancer down the road. That's, that's I, I, did, I had no clue that the flu, I thought it was just a nice thing, avoid a week of sneezing right. and, you know, but flu shot, you can actually reduce your cancer. And heart disease down and, the road. And, ha and, 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 and we have to think long term as a society. What about statins? I mean, it seems like these are drugs like Lipitor and Crestor mm -hmm. and you hear that you see the, so, so I mean, would you I mean, I, I, you right. know, no one should take our medical advice based on a thing in a video, but right. I, I mean, is, is it, do, are people taking it just for heart disease or are people taking it more broadly now? Listen, I mean, I'm a believer that these yeah. drugs have such a profound effect on cancer, heart disease, stroke, potentially Alzheimer's, that you should consider taking it to prevent these diseases. Right. And again, giving no recommendations, but what I say is, yeah. you, your parents, they should talk about it with their doctor. Right. And say, so why shouldn't I be on this drug? Right, and there are some side effects, but they, they're easy to test for and... They, they're test for and then they're reversible. Right, okay, so, so you're not gonna... With anything, you gotta do a risk and a benefit. Right. And you have to look at you and say, am I high risk for X, Y, and Z? If you are, what can prevent it or delay it? Right. The name of the game is not treating disease, it's preventing disease. Right, right, this, this, this is fascinating. I well, I might talk to my wife about getting some, well, no, no advice here. Everyone should talk to their doctor. <laughs> exactly. I mean, by the way, another great medicine to yeah. reduce inflammation is called aspirin. Aspirin, I've heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hell of a drug. Again, there are side effects to aspirin. It can affect bleeding. But at the same time, it's a dramatic effect by yeah. lowering inflammation. Right. And that, that is its main side effect. I mean, it's this age-old drug. It's, mm -hmm. it's made, it's a blood thinner. So if, if, you, if you get a cut or you bleed or while, you have, while you're taking aspirin, you might bleed more. Right. Blood thinner is a funny term. I'm not quite sure what it means. Yeah. I keep thinking paint thinner when you say that. <laughs> right. That's kind of how I imagine it. It, 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 yeah. it binds to the platelets and blocks them from activating. It I stops see. them from working really well. So it's more anti-clotting. Right. And platelets are one yeah. of the key components right. of clotting, and they certainly affect it. Right. So your blood will have the same viscosity. It, won't, it just won't clot as, as easily. Exactly. And you can certainly paint a wall with either one. <laughs> That's a little morbid. All right. Well, th thanks a bunch.